Okay, all right, so if you're joining in, welcome to our very first virtual ELA lesson. My name is Amelia. Uh, my students call me Mrs. Cap. So if you're a student joining in, hi, I'm Mrs. Cap. I'm a teacher here in Ohio. So if you're joining in, I'd love to hear where you're from, first and foremost, because one of the coolest things about these lessons is we're going to be joining in and interacting with students and teachers from all over the country and actually even sometimes the world. So how cool is that? So feel free to pop in, say who you are, introduce yourself, where you're from. We can get started. But before I get started, I just want to say that um, we're, we're putting this on both Instagram and Facebook. So I'm going to be asking you guys some questions during this lesson, just like I would in my classroom. And you can feel free to type your responses and let me know what you're thinking. But I will be able to see your comments right now. But I do want you still to comment and interact with this lesson and discuss it in your household with your parents or your siblings, because I can go back through after this is over and rewatch and reply to some of your comments and interact with all of you. So thank you for joining in. Welcome to our first virtual ELA lesson. So today, boys and girls, we are going to be reading one of my favorite books to talk about the love of reading. And those of you joining in, hopefully you've found that book in your life so far that's made you kind of a forever reader. And if you haven't yet, we're on that mission and journey together as teachers and students and parents alike, right? So the book we're going to read today is called Lost in the Library. It's a story of patience and fortitude. And this book is by the author Josh Funk. If you've never read any of Josh Funk's book, one of his books, one of my other favorites of his is Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast. He has The Case of the Stinky Stench. She has so many good books. So he's an awesome author. But before we get started, we need to do a little bit of some reading and work on our reading comprehension skills. So if you guys look behind me in my little makeshift classroom, I have some anchor charts. And we're gonna talk about some reading skills that we can really do and learn from this awesome book. So um, if you look behind me, I'm going to kind of scooch over to the side, if you guys can see, and hopefully I know on Instagram and Facebook, it's a little bit different of an angle, so I'll try and move things right in front so you can see. But this, what we're going to start off working on is the skill of characterization. So as you're listening right now, I want you to be thinking, whether you're a kindergartner, first grader, second grader, third grader, fourth grader, fifth grader, maybe even older, what does characterization mean? When I ask my students in my classroom all the time, I say, you know, when we think of our books that we're reading, the books are developed through the story, through the characters. The story is so important, but the author really sets the stage, sets the scene by showing us different things what the characters are doing. So characterization. As a student, your goal for characterization is I can describe a character in detail using evidence from the text. Now let me check real quick and make sure Instagram, you guys can see this too. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. All right. So yes, you guys can see the anchor chart. So Think about that in your head right now. Your goal as a student is that you can describe a character in detail using evidence from the text. So when we say in detail, oh my goodness, we're always asking for that, right? Tell me more about it. And then using evidence, we're talking about what's happening in the text that you can really show what you know. Think of math. When you're doing math, you have to show your work, right? In reading, citing text evidence is showing your work. So we're gonna work on that as we read our book today. When we describe a character, though, we don't just say this lion in our book is large, right? That's a great thing to describe the character, but it's not enough detail. So we describe our characters with at least three different things. Look words. So think of a look word in your head right now. Think of yourself. So if I describe myself with a look word, I might say I have blonde hair, right? That's, a, that's how I look. So think of that for yourself. Can you describe a look word for yourself? How do you look? Give me something. The next one is feel words. How do you feel? That's an inside emotion. So it's something that people probably aren't seeing on the outside, but you're feeling it on the inside. And what's great about books is authors kind of give us an inside look inside their characters to see how they're feeling. So think about yourself right now. What's a feel word to describe yourself? How are you feeling? Maybe you're feeling excited that you get to see some of your friends on the internet today, right? Maybe you're gonna do like a Zoom with your classroom. Maybe you feel a little bit tired because it's been a long day and you've got a lot of work to do to catch up for schoolwork, right? However that is, how are you feeling right now? Got that word? All right, so so far we have a look word and a feel word. So I, for my look word, I said I have blonde hair. And for my feel word, I'm feeling, I'm feeling excited that I get to be here and share a lesson with you guys from all over. So I'm going to say excited for my feel word. Action word. These two can sometimes be the same because you can feel one way and act another. So right now I'm probably acting excited because I am excited. So I could say that too, but I like to think of something different. So I would like to say that right now I am acting enthusiastic because I'm excited about this book. I love this book. So how are you acting in your life right now? 
That's your act word. So as we're reading the book today, we're going to look for these things with our characters, patience and fortitude, our two lions. So we're going to look at how do they look, their physical traits, how do they feel, what are they feeling, what are their emotions, and then their actions, what are they doing to show their, their character. So this is how we give text evidence, the character's thoughts, their actions, and their words. We look at those things to figure out how they're looking, feeling, and acting. That's our characterization skill. We're going to do two things up. We're going to do two skills with this book, which I know it's like, whoo, one book, two skills. We can do so much, right? Okay. So our next skill we're going to work on is vocabulary. So if you don't already, if you're watching this live, you might not have this right now with you, and that's okay because you can watch the replay to be able to do this. But if you have a paper and a pencil, grab it. Okay, it can be any blank piece of paper, any color pencil, it can be a marker, it can be a crayon, it can be a pen, whatever it is, grab it, okay? Because as we're reading today, not only are we going to be talking about characterization, but we're also going to be talking about vocabulary. This book, Lost in the Library, is filled with tremendous vocabulary. One of the best ways we grow our vocabulary is through reading. Yes, talking, we learn new vocabulary through talking, but books teach us more vocabulary than anything we do. So. This book is gonna be filled with new words. You're gonna be, I'm gonna be reading it and you're gonna be thinking, ooh, I've never heard that word before. And that's a good thing, because we're learning. So I kind of made us this little list and I'm gonna get my smelly markers because everything is more fun with smelly markers, right? All right, so I'm gonna get the black one, which I think is black licorice. So if you like black licorice smell, you would like this one. It's not my favorite, but that's okay. <laughs> so for the vocabulary, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna first just be making a list. So as we read, when we come across words on a page and we're reading them, I, and I think to myself, hmm, this is a word that maybe I don't know very well, I've heard it before, but I don't really know what it means, or I have never heard that word before. What in the world does that mean? I have no clue what I'm reading, right? So one of those two things, it doesn't have to be a completely new word. It can be a word maybe you've heard, but you don't exactly know what it means. We're gonna add that to our list. So on your pen and paper at home, what I want you to do, is as I'm adding words up here, you can add words to your list. Now remember, your schema, your prior knowledge in your head, is different than mine, and different than the person next to you in your home, and different than the person across the world, right? So you don't have to write down a word that I write down if you know what it means. If you're like, oh, I had, that was a vocabulary word in my classroom last week, I got this, okay? But if you don't know it, you're gonna add it to your list. And then when we're all done, we're going to talk about what we can do during our reading workshop time, because you can have some reading workshop time later today, just like we would in the classroom. So I do see that on Facebook, a lot of my students are joining in, which I love, love to see. So hi, everybody. Um, you guys, we, I feel like we're in our classroom. I have my anchor charts. I have my kind of stage going on here. I have my Diet Coke, right? It's just like a regular old day. We're going to read a book together like we always do. So two things we're looking for as we read this book, ways to describe our characters, patience and fortitude with their look, feel, and action words, and vocabulary. We're gonna add new words that we see to our list. So on your paper and pencil, with the paper and pencil, you're gonna be adding new vocabulary words as we read. So let's get started. I don't wanna hold off for the book any longer because it's such a good one. So Lost in the Library, a story of patience and fortitude. And I'll try and show the pictures up close. Let me see again that Instagram can see. Oh yeah, you guys got it. Okay, just making sure because the views are a little different. All righty. Here we go, and we can see our library right here. Early one morning, while all New York slept, night was transforming to dawn. Silence filled all of Manhattan, except fortitude woke with a yawn. Oh, okay, fortitude, he's so tired. Patience, good morning he said from his plinth, but Patience was nowhere in sight. He'd entered the library's grand labyrinth when no one was watching last night. So we have Patience over, we have Fortitude over here, but Patience is missing because looking at that page, are there any words you don't know? I'm gonna add one, I'm gonna add two actually right now. Plinth, and I'm gonna guess that's a new word for a lot of us, right? Even it was a new word for me the first time I read this book. I could figure out what it means from the pictures, but I didn't know ahead of time. So I'm going to add that. And I'm also going to add labyrinth. If you're into fantasy books, you maybe have heard the word labyrinth before. That's a word that we see a lot of times in fantasy. But I'm going to make sure I spell this right because it's a weird one. You would think
think the R came first, but it doesn't. All right, so I'm going to add those two to our story. Fortitude never abandoned his post, but patience had not yet returned. As sunlight ascended across the East Coast, Fortitude grew quite concerned. How could he do this? He's never been late. Fortitude leapt on all fours. Lacking all patience, he couldn't just wait and scampered through Astor Hall's doors. This takes place in the New York Library, which we're going to see, and we can see more pictures of. But Astor Hall is the name of the main area, named after a certain family. The ceiling above was 12 elephants tall and dozens of buffalo wide. Patients told stories of rooms like this hall, but it was a new world inside. Twisting and turning, he noticed some stairs. Patients might climb, he supposed. When reaching the top, he was caught unawares. A frolicsome statuette posed. Looking for someone, she asked with a grin. Fortitude nodded his head. Patience, my partner, my sidekick, my twin. I really must find him, he said. The Rose Main Reading Room. Back to your right. Sometimes he's there, the girl stated. Fortitude thanked her and ran out of sight, hoping his buddy awaited. Pictures, and I'm going to add the word frolicsome to our anchor chart, because frolicsome is probably a new word to a lot of us. Over and under the tables and chairs, Fortitude looked high and low. Searching the shelves on the walls up the stairs, Fortitude paced to and fro. After what felt like forever, he ceased. Patience just wasn't around. Fortitude heard someone's voice to the east and eagerly followed the sound. Is there any words on that page you don't know? Maybe ceased would be a good one to add. Fix my little book jacket and take the book jacket off so we can not be in the way. People in portraits that lined every wall whispered and gossiped away, so Fortitude roared at his loudest of all to turn their attention his way. Has anyone noticed a lion like me? He's quiet and peaceful and sweet. Those are some character traits, aren't they? Quiet and peaceful and sweet. Right there, that describes patience, right? We can add that. Quiet will be an action. Peaceful could be a feel or an action. And sweet could be a noun. Right? We can describe our character with those words. A grumpy old man said, No lion but thee. Now please go back out to the street. He's not too happy, is he? Gives me some Harry Potter vibes with the portraits coming to life, doesn't it? Exiting gloomily, Fortitude wandered back through the library's maze. Patience, dear patience, where are you? He pondered while thinking of happier days. All right, pondered up there. If you don't know what pondered means, add that to your anchor chart. That's a great word. And if you do know what that means, but maybe you want to explore it more, or remember it, add that to your anchor chart. Writers, when you're in your writing time, think about that word pondered. If I sit there and I'm writing about a character, I might say he thought about something, but if I say he pondered, ooh, so much better, right? That's a great word to add to our vocabulary. Kind of add it to our little tool belt of vocabulary. In the beginning, so he's remembering back. Here we have a flashback. In the beginning, young patience was shy, but fortitude thought he was rude. Weeks and then months and then years traveled by. Eventually, friendship ensued. Patients told stories of ducklings and moons, of wardrobes and buttons and fun. On cold snowy evenings or hot afternoons, fortitude cherished each one. Some good words right there, right? And also some good stories. Stories of ducklings, moons, and wardrobes. I can think of a couple stories that fit that. Rays from the sun had begun creeping in where water flew out from a sink. 
a little bronze lion said, Katya, I win! And gave him a satisfied wink. The lion said, Wait, you're not patient. Oh no! The splash, it's a game that we play. Patience? asked Fortitude. Where did he go? The sunrise is minutes away. Today? Haven't seen him, the lion confessed. But I wouldn't worry, old chap. Perhaps you require some help on your quest. I think what you need is a map. I think a map would help him too. What do you guys think? I think a map would help? I think so. It's a huge library. Huge. It's not like our library we're thinking of. This is multiple floors. Fortitude scanned every atlas he could before tossing each to the side. Only a library map would do good. Eureka! A visitor's guide! So exciting, he found a visitor's guide. That's awesome. I'm gonna add that word right there, atlas. Now I know what that word means, and some of you might, maybe you talk about it in social studies, but we don't use atlases as often anymore. So it might be a new word to many of you. So we're gonna add atlas up there. How many hundreds of rooms can exist? Reading the map, he was shocked. Fortitude dashed the places he'd missed, except through the doors that were locked. And here we're gonna see Fortitude go all the way around the library, up and down and around, all the way around. Oh. He searched every floor from the first to the third. Patience just couldn't be found. Fortitude thought, I will not be deterred. What's on this floor labeled brown? Ooh, you think he's gonna find them there? And I'm gonna add deterred. Deterred's a great word. Make sure I spell it with two R's, I believe. Yep. Deterred, he will not be deterred. That sounds like a fun word we'd all laugh at in the classroom, doesn't it? It kind of does. Fortitude quickly crept down the dark hall and into a jungle of joy with colorful pictures adorning each wall and books for each cat, girl, and boy. Fortitude prowled past Sendok and Rylant, Yorin and Pinkney and Bloom, while keeping his footsteps impeccably silent. He heard something in the next room. Ooh. He heard something. And I love this picture right here, this illustration. This is showing the children's room at the New York Public, Public Library, which is incredible. And you're gonna get to see that, so you'll see. But this is a beautiful illustration of that. And, oh my goodness, vocabulary, right? I'm gonna right now think of adorning. And prowled, you prowled past and impeccably. Wow, we are filling up our anchor chart. We have so many new words, you guys. Patience, said Fortitude, what are you doing? But Patience stood still as a stone. The sun's almost risen. The pigeons are cooing. You've got to get back to your throne. Just one more paragraph. Patience declared. Then something caught Fortitude's eye. There lay the stories that Patience had shared. The monkeys, the pebble, the pie. All those stories, you guys. Probably familiar stories too, right? Are we making an inference here? Think about it. Patience, since the very beginning when we did that flashback, Patience has been sharing with Fortitude stories all, from all over the world, right? All these different stories. And how, right now, what is Fortitude realizing? What can we infer? The author didn't say it, but what is Fortitude realizing on this page when he sees these stories laying out? Think about that right now. Patience, did you learn these stories for me? Fortitude asked, but he knew. Patience just nodded and said, Well, you see, I love sharing stories with you. The lions returned to their guard on the street, and nobody noticed they'd gone. Okay. 
I'm going to show you that picture first, actually, guys. And was your inference right? Did you infer that he was learning those stories to read to fortitude or to share with fortitude? If you inferred that, you were right. Fortitude sat in his usual seat, and slowly the day carried on. But something was missing, though patience was found. Fortitude still felt a need. Patience, he said, when there's no one around. Tonight, can we sneak in and read? Now he loves to read too, right? And that's the end of our story, but I always like to share if the author includes a little note in the back, and they did in this book, because what's great about this book, even though it's a fantasy genre because we have lions coming to life and touring the library, we have a lot of great nonfiction here in the back. So in the back of the book, our author says has a get to know the New York Public Library. I'm going to read you guys one of the facts from there. It says, Patience and Fortitude, the name of the lions, live outside the Fifth Avenue entrance of the Stephen A. Schwartzman Building of New York Public Library. They have perched there since 1911. So they've been there, guys, for over a hundred years. And were given their names in the 1930s. I'm not going to tell you how yet, because that's a challenge I'm going to give you guys. So I can tell you how they got their names. But they were given their names in the 1930s. When Fortitude enters the library, he finds himself in Astor Hall, named for the Astor family and their generosity and devotion over five generations to the New York Public Library. Because they donated so much money to kind of keep reading alive in New York, they named the area after them. And the statue, this is a fun part, remember that statuette that he met? The frolicsome statuette? The statue that Fortitude meets is actually called Frolicsome Girl. She was created by Matve Zog in 1873, and she lives on the third floor. Isn't that so cool? And there's a bunch more. The Rose Main Reading Room is roughly the length of two city blocks. So the main reading room, you guys, is two city blocks. Think about how long that is to walk from one street to another. It has a ceiling that's five stories high. So think of your school. If your school is more than one floor, it's five of those floors high, the ceiling. And it has served as a gathering place for writers, researchers, and readers for more than 100 years. The other thing that Fortitude runs into is a talkative portrait in the Edna Barnes Solomon Room, which is lined with paintings of historical figures and originals such as George Washington and Washington Irving. The lion head water fountain on the first floor is one of several throughout the building, and it helps Fortitude locate the Lionel Pincus and Princess Friel map division. So it's where all the maps are kept, and it holds more than 433,000 sheet maps and 20,000 books and atlases. So such some really awesome facts about it. So I'll get my book jacket back on. But one of the links I'm going to share with you guys and challenge you guys can help you guys learn more. And I learned so much about this library through this book, but also through more research that I did. So let's go back to our anchor charts before we kind of wrap up. Look at your anchor or your piece of paper. And hopefully, if you had a piece of paper and were following along, you took some notes and you wrote down some new vocabulary words. What I want you to do today, so when we go off during workshop time, is do some vocabulary boxes. So we're going to think about that, okay? But last thing I want to talk about with our lesson is characterization. So let's talk about, we'll do fortitude, because we saw more of fortitude in the book than patience. So look words. And you can type these. Facebook, I actually can see your comments, right? So if you're on Facebook, but I can see some, some of your comments coming through, so feel free to type them there. And Instagram, type them so afterwards I can interact with you guys. But we think of fortitude. How does he look? So if I look at fortitude, I know, and we can open up to a page that we know for sure is fortitude. There he is right there. I know he's large. I know he has a big mane. He's a golden color. I'm not going to say he's orange or yellow. I'm going to say he's golden. It's golden fur, right? Those are some look words for him. He has these big paws. Feel words. You know, I think that Fortitude's feeling in the beginning, frustrated. I think he's feeling frustrated that patience is gone and not back right before sunrise. How do you think he's feeling? How, how is he feeling? What do you think? So you can think about that and share that with the person next to you, your parents, the sibling. How is Fortitude feeling? And then how does he act? Think of Fortitude's actions and what he's doing in the story. How is he acting? My, oh, if I had to pick one word, I would say he's acting determined because think about how huge this library is and he doesn't give up, right? He keeps going and going and going until he finally finds patience. Even though it's getting down right to the, like, right to the wire of the sun rising and he needs to be out there, he's still determined to find his buddy. So I would say for an action word, he acts determined. And if you notice, I gave text evidence for each of those. How he looks, I use the pictures. 
how he feels, I explain one of the things that he said and did. And then how he acts, his actions, I explain him going to the library and using text evidence. So have that conversation with the person next to you after this is over and kind of do a little bit more characterization about patience and fortitude. If you want to, and if you have a printer available to you, or you have an iPad, because you can pull it up on a, P on a PDF and you can write on it, I did create some graphic organizers for you guys. So I did create some colorful, I put them on colorful paper because it's more fun, right? We all know that. But if you look at there on um, the Instagram for Get Your Teach On or on my Instagram, there is a link to a free document that has Lost in the Library, a little organizer to describe patience, and then answer the question to yourself, how does patience fit his name? So I kind of made a big version of this, and I can add that in. What we talked about, I'm going to do this really quick. I can say that he is large, big paws. This is for patience this time. I can say that he loves to read and that he's calm. And I can say patience fits his name. He fits his name because... He is calm, he loves to read, he behaves very patiently instead of being in a hurry to get back to the plinth, he's more patient. And then I could do the same thing with fortitude. How does fortitude act, feel? So we said fortitude is um, a golden color. We said fortitude um, is determined. We said fortitude is frustrated. And if you are a third, fourth, or fifth grader, I would challenge you to make sure you give a specific example of each of these in the book. And how does he fit his name? Well, fortitude, the word, actually means to push through and not give up in times of hard, hard times or times that are a little bit of a struggle. So he definitely shows fortitude. All right, so before I let you guys go, again, there's that free document that shares these. So teachers, you can share this with your students. You can put the PDF in Google Classroom, drop it in Seesaw. There is also a little vocabulary organizer if you want to sort your new words. And then some vocabulary boxes. So students, what I want you to do with your vocabulary is draw yourself a box with four squares. And in the box, I want you to write the word, the new word that you learned in one box. I want you to give me a definition in your own words. Just think about what you think this word means based on the book. I want you to draw me a picture. So any picture that shows what that word means. So if you had the word, let's say frolicsome. I'm gonna draw someone skipping. Because when I think of frolic, someone I think of someone like carefree. And then lastly, related words. So words that mean the same or opposite, but words that are kind of related to this story. You can add in your fourth box. And if you are a fourth or fifth grader or higher, challenge me a step farther. Take your words and break them into word parts. Draw yourself three boxes and write your prefix, suffix, and root word. So if I had or prefix, root word, and suffix, if I have impeccably, I'm going to write impeccably. I'm going to break my word up to work on my word parts. So fourth and fifth graders, try and do some word parts. And before you guys leave today, if you look at that document, and I'll put this an image of this in my Instagram stories too, I created some extension activity ideas. So I'd like you guys to try some fun things with the book. You can keep reading. You can make a book bin out of a cereal box. Just take a cereal box and cut it. You can do a virtual tour. I, I included two links to a virtual tour and a video of the public library. You can be an architect and an engineer and grab those things around the house and build it. My husband built us our own library, right, with my, with my boys. Use a box and some paper. Lots of activities. So thank you for joining in. Stay tuned on the Get Your Teach On Facebook and Instagram. Or I'm sorry. This is done for the Get Your Teach On and Facebook Instagram page. But you can head over to Hope and Wade King, their Facebook and Instagram page. And you can do a brain break and get fit. So thank you guys for joining in. Enjoy that. I hope you enjoyed that book. Enjoy those activities. Go have your own workshop time and learn, 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 and keep reading and loving to read just like patience and fortitude. So again, my name is Mrs. Cap. Thank you for joining in. These videos will be available for replay if you missed the beginning. So thank you for being here. Bye, guys.